When Louis XVI succeeded the French throne in 1774, he was a 19-year-old with an enormous responsibility. The government was deeply in debt, he wanted to be a good king, and he wanted to win the love of his people. To end the religious tensions, he signed the Edict of Versailles, granting non-Roman Catholics, Huguenots, Lutherans, and Jews the legal right to practice their faiths. Then he tried hard to solve France's financial crisis, but got no cooperation from anyone. The nobles said the king had no right to levy new taxes, so he tried to take out large international loans, like our selling treasury bonds today. Unfortunately, that did not go well either. To show his part of the effort, he even published a statement of the French crown's expenses in 1781, a tradition faithfully followed by most world leaders till today, of course, except for Donald Trump. But no matter how hard he tried, nothing seemed to work. In 1783, he hired Charles Alexandre de Calonne, hoping to solve the financial crisis by increasing public spending, kind of to buy the country's way out of debt. Again, that failed. In 1787, King Louis invoked the Assembly of Notables to discuss a revolutionary new fiscal reform. When the nobles learned the extent of the debt, they were shocked and rejected the plan. You see, contrary to public belief, Louis XVI was a good king. His attempts at international loans, public spending, raising taxes on the upper class were all quite ahead of his time. Did Nostradamus see the fate of this unfortunate king? Absolutely. Let me show you what I have found. Quatrain 1, 14, Quote, from the enslaved populace, songs, chants, and demands, while princes and lords are held captive in prisons, these will in the future by headless idiots be received as divine prayers. The French Revolution ran on the high notes of La Marseillaise during the Reign of Terror from September 1793 till July 1794. Nobles were sent to prisons before being sent to the guillotine. The country was ruled by fanatics, the headless idiots, like Louis Philippe II, Duke of Orleans. Louis XVI's cousin, who was also France's richest man, he voted for Louis XVI's death, but soon later lost his own head. In Quatrain 188, quote, The divine wrath overtakes the great prince. A short while before he will marry. Both supporters and credit will suddenly diminish counsel. He will die because of the shaven heads. Did you know that in 1770, when 15-year-old Louis married 14-year-old Habsburg Archduchess Maria Antonia, the French public was not happy with the match. During the Seven Year War, France's alliance with Austria dragged France into financial chaos. While the French public felt insulted after the defeat by the British and the Prussians, they blamed the Queen and this quatrain clearly showed Louis XVI's unpopular marriage and the effects on his people. In quatrain 202, quote, the blue head will inflict upon the white head as much evil as France has done them good. Dead at the sail yard, the great one hung on the branch. When seized by his own, the king will say how much. During the French Revolution, conflicts between two rival political factions, the Girondins and the Jacobins, brought more bloodshed to the already chaotic time. With French flags being red, white, and blue, Calling this a conflict between blue and white seemed to be perfect. Over 40,000 died across France during the Reign of Terror. In 
In Louis XVI's trial of 1792, the convention's secretary, Jean-Baptiste Malhi, presented the following accusation. Quote, Louis, the French nation accuses you of having committed a multitude of crimes to establish your tyranny in destroying her freedom. Through his defense team, the king answered all 33 accusations for his defense. He was accused of bribing, improper payments to guards, and many more. With the accusation of bribery, it is possible that the king did ask, how much, when he was seized by his own people. Of course, no money can save him from his ruin. In Quatrain 464, quote, the transgressor in bourgeois garb, he will come to try the king with his offense. Fifteen soldiers, for the most part bandits, last of life and chief of his fortune. This quatrain gives another vivid description of Louis XVI's trial. The transgressor wears bourgeois garb, named for middle-class clothes. This is to show who was behind the trial. Raymond de Sez, the king's defense lawyer, stated, Louis ascended the throne at the age of 20, and at the age of 20 he gave to the throne the example of character. He brought to the throne no wicked weaknesses, no corrupting passions. He was economical, just severe. He showed himself always the constant friend of the people. The people wanted the abolition of servitude, he began by abolishing it on his own lands. The people asked for reforms in the criminal law. He carried out these reforms. The people wanted liberty. He gave it to them. The people themselves came before him in his sacrifices. Nevertheless, it is in the name of these very people that one today demands, Citizens, I cannot finish. I stop myself before history. Think how it will judge your judgment, and that the judgment of him will be judged by the centuries. At Louis XVI's death, it brought to an end the royal Bourbon rule. His life, fortune, and the French monarchy all ended with him just as depicted in the Quatrain. In Quatrain 4, 65, quote, Towards the deserter of the great fortress, after he will have abandoned his place, his adversary will exhibit very great prowess. The emperor soon dead will be condemned. On the 21st of June, 1791, when Louis XVI attempted to flee secretly with his family from Paris to the royalist fortress town of Montmédy, on the northeastern border of France, they were caught and the French public felt betrayed. Although Austria tried unsuccessfully to save Louis XVI, things turned for the worse when the brother of the Queen, Emperor Leopold II of the Holy Roman Empire, died in March 1792. Louis XVI and Marie Antoinette soon followed and lost their lives. In Quatrain 9, O oh, to quote, by night will come through the forest of rains. Two couples round about rout queen the white stone, the monk king in gray in varines. Elected cabot causes tempest, fire, blood, slice. This quatrain did not strike me till I started my keyword research. But look what I found when I searched for Marie Antoinette and the white stone. This article jumped up and the white stone was mentioned as a land marked on their escape to Varines. Forest of Rains, closest to Sanzi, was on the route to Austria. How can Nostradamus know all these details 200 years before it happened? Then when I searched for the word, the monk king, I found it as the name for Romero II of Aragon the medieval Spain ruler who decapitated all the noblemen who had dared to challenge his royal power. 
Was that Louis XVI's intention to kill off his rebellious enemies? He was captured in Marines with gray outlook. And when he was charged for treason, the indictment was for Citizen Louis Capet. It is a name the Reign of Terror leader elected to call him. Nostradamus carefully used these words to paint a vivid picture of the events in horror. Like the use of tempest to describe the political and social storms, the word slice to describe the guillotine. Do you still call that a lucky guess? I don't think so. In Quatrain 977, quote, the realm taken the king will conspire. The lady taken to death ones swoam by lot. They will refuse life to the queen and son and the mistress at the fort of the wife. Even though Louis XVI viewed his attempt to escape as a way to protect himself and his family, the French public viewed it as his intent to conspire with foreign powers. And Marie Antoinette was believed to have passed military secrets that caused several defeats of the French armies by the Austrians. Eventually, the queen was beheaded while the son, Dauphin of France, died in prison. These events were accurately described in the first three lines of this quatrain. But what does the fourth line mean? What does the mistress at the fort of the wife mean? I believe it is about Marie-Louis de Lamballe, also known as Princess Marie-Louis of Savoy who was rumored to be the lover of Marie Antoinette. So that is what mistress of the wife means. As the richest woman in France, she stayed in London to seek help for the royal families, but returned to France to serve the king, queen, and royal children she governed. When she was put to trial and asked to denounce the king and queen, she refused. She was thrown to a crowd of men and died a horrible death. I want to share with you what Louis XVI said after his trial, quote, You have heard my defense. I would not repeat the details. In talking to you perhaps for the last time, I declare that my conscience reproaches me with nothing. And my defenders have told you the truth. I never feared the public examination of my conduct, but my heart is torn by the imputation that I would want to shed the blood of the people and especially that the misfortunes of August the 10th be attributed to me. I avow that the many proofs that I have always acted from my love of the people and the manner in which I have always conducted myself seem to prove that I did not fear to put myself forward in order to spare their blood and forever prevent such an imputation. Knowing what we know today, it is easy to unlock the mystery behind Nostradamus's quatrains about Louis XVI, but it is not as easy to unlock the future mystery hidden still in the Book of Prophecy. But we are one step closer to decoding the mystery with every quatrain we decode. This is Ken Peters. Thank you for watching.